Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Coach Kelly Speaks Show. I am her guest host, Patrina Makins, the founder of the Not My Kids Foundation. And most importantly, I am Coach Kelly's mom. Yay, I'm so excited to be, uh, have an opportunity to be her mother. You, you guys know how awesome and how fabulous she is. Uh, she had a, a guest supposed to be on the show today, but um, that person, you know, had a conflict with their schedule. So here I am. <laughs> um, so I would just like to tell you, you know, tell you who I am, my background. I'm a native Washingtonian, uh, grew up and raised in uh, Northeast DC. Um, I attended um, public education, uh, Spingon, graduated, graduate from Spingon High School. And I would tell you, growing up, I hated going to school. I, I really did. This, you know, Kelly is really transparent, and I believe she kind of get that from her mother. <laughs> but that's that's my story. And um, so, uh, in graduating from um, high school, I ended up going to night school uh, to complete my um, education. And that was my 12th grade year. I was pregnant with Kelly and um, went to my prom and graduated. And, you know, shortly after that, I uh, got married, a young bride, and uh, started my career um, in the workplace. Uh, first, I was a stay-at-home mom. Then I decided to go back to school to uh, create a better situation for myself and my family. So I'm a, a regent a alumnus of Regent University, where I have a master's degree in special education. Um, cross categorical special ed. So I'm really excited about that um, because I'm here today because the thing that I really hate is the thing I'm so compassionate about. And the Not, Not My Kids Foundation, um, our mission is to make a positive life change and impact in the lives of young people through mentorship programs, education, and advocacy. Yes, I said education. I told you my story about how I really didn't like school, but sometimes the things that you don't like have a way of being the things that you really are compassionate about. Um, I, as an educator, I um, currently I'm a, I'm a full-time teacher at Blue High School, and I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have uh, remember having a conversation with, uh, well, Kelly sharing with you guys about um, Blue High School, where um, they had 100% of students who applied to uh, college. This is Blue High School in Southeast Washington, D.C. And a lot of times people say, well, is, is there any good thing that come out of Southeast Washington? Absolutely. Um, Blue High School this year had over 168 students to apply for high school and got uh, national rec recognition as a result of that. So she and I, through, our Not My, through the Not My Kids Foundation, decided to do a campaign. So our mo the campaign was entitled 100% uh, of students graduating uh, uh, from high school, we're going to you know, have 100% of uh, students to uh, participate in the prom. So that's only fair, don't you believe that? Uh, so we also agreed the same thing. So we um, had a lot of uh, people from the community uh, through our social media blast uh, deciding to participate in that campaign. Uh, women coming up from different um, places and donating um, new dresses and uh, for the girls for their prom. So the guys on the Facebook page said, well, you know, this is really great, so what about the guys? So we'll allow them to get involved as well. So they began to donate, um, uh, you know, attire for the young men as well. And one of the um, gentlemen, he uh, owns a um, McDonald's in Southeast Washington, D.C. His name, I, I can't remember his name, and I do apologize if, he, if you're listening and, and um, you, um, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't have your name, but he, he donated uh, for his, his uh, McDonald's is located in Mississippi, I, I believe it's Mississippi Avenue Southeast, so if, you know, it's uh, only one IHOP, actually it's not McDonald's, it's IHOP, and, you know, he's the only one over there, and he donated 25 tickets so that the students could, uh, after the prom, 
go to has some place to go safe you know it's a big thing uh, when you graduate from high school and and then it's like where's the after party so we made a, it we uh, we were afforded the opportunity to get those resources so that our kids can be in a safe environment and go to IHOP after graduation. So I'm really excited about that. Um, also, talking about the PK Girls Mentoring Program um, is something really, really dear to my heart. But just let me just back up for a moment and kind of tell you how the Not My Kids Foundation actually started. Um, someone said the worst place that you can find yourself is between a mother and their child. It really doesn't matter whether it's a cat, a dog, a bird, but you know, all species have a mama. So, um, you, and one thing about mamas, you better not touch our babies. We're really, we are willing to scratch your eyes out <laughs> if somebody mess with our babies. Okay, so, um, I just want to share with you, uh, because the Not My Kids Foundation is about my kids. You know, I was willing to stand up, fight for, and declare the next generation. And as I mentioned to you about my humble beginning uh, growing up in D.C. and, you know, not, <laughs> you know, uh, going off to college right away, starting a family. A lot of times people, they look upon, you know, um, like women, young ladies in, uh, who had, you know, like myself, had a baby in high school, uh, was pregnant in high school, and then later on had a, uh, you know, um, young ladies like myself <laughs> who um, had a baby, you know, during high school. And, um, but you know, I, you know, going into the workplace, as I said, as I mentioned for a mention, you know, it was, that was just my starting point where I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna create a better situation for my, my children. And so that was my defining moment, graduating from high school and, you know, uh, going into the workplace. Uh, only job that I could uh, be a part of is inter-level positions, but I knew that it, there was much more to me, much more in life for me. And um, so I, I um, always been a focused person, always been someone who believed to, to live my life by purpose. So I discovered my purpose, which is now the Not My Kids Foundation, through my kids. And growing up in D.C. at a time where I was raising my kids in the late uh, 19, well, early uh, 1982, around 1982, uh, because I had Kelly when I was in, in 1981. So 1982, uh, where we live, it was really, um, the community was uh, the hood, you know, and, and, and you know, um, just trying to protect your children in an environment like that was really, really a challenge. You know, um, I remember one day, in fact, I shared this story with my students earlier um, today, and I was, they, we did a, a activities that say, who am I? And one of the questions were, um, it was, where, 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 where did you actually live? Where, have you ever, where did you ever live? And I shared with them where I live. And I would tell you, I told them that the community was so bad that um, if I told them where I, where I was from, you know, one thing about kids, you know, they want to, you know, represent their hood or wherever they're, um, if they live in the suburban, suburbs, where they're from. So it does matter where you're from, you know, a lot of people, you know, become shame of, uh, you know, where their, their humble beginnings, if you will. And, but I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of my humble beginnings because it's my now, it be, my humble beginnings now has become a testimony um, to those who are still in uh, low income housing, um, looking for a way out because, you know, with through the Not My Kids Foundation, that's our mission. Our mission is to stand up for, fight for, and declare the next generation. And as I said, I fought every single day, block by block, by block for my children because I, re I refuse to allow them to be a statistic. Um, so I just want to um, just, you know, kind of go over some of the reason why all of us need to be concerned about our children. You know, um, I, I hear it all the time, you know, a lot of times people 
Um, they look at children and they stereotype and they said, you know what, somebody need to do something about these kids. But I'm here to tell you that Nancy Reagan said it best. I think someone else said it before she did. But Nancy Reagan said it takes a village to raise children. And it really, really does. And I remember growing up in my community that, you know, if I got out of line, I did something, I was one of the um, other uh, parents in the community, they saw me out of line. Oh my God, before I even got home, my mother knew about it because they, so they dealt with the situation. And then by the time I got home, my mom knew about it and I got in, I got in trouble all over again. So it really does take, um, um, it takes a village. And guess what, guys? We need to be that village. We need to be the ones who standing up and fighting for our kids. You know, we hear it all the time. They're so disrespectful. They're so rude, and they so this, and they so that. But those mothers and those people that was in our community, they were our mentors. Those were the people that we had an opportunity to look up to. Those were the ones who fought for us, made sure if our parents was not home that they were there to be there for our parents to, you know, watch over us so that we could, so it would be a, uh, we would be in a safe place. So we need more of those people to be, you know, those people of old. Uh, most of us, we don't even know who our neighbors are. <laughs> And I, I'm pretty guilty of that myself. I don't know who my neighbors are, but when I see them, I have a conversation, um, you know, with, with them and everything. But you know, uh, um, um, I remember um, Magandhi. He said we need to be the change that we want to see in our community. Um, Mike Murdoch says that we don't have a right to complain about anything that we're not willing to change, and we know that change is not change until it's changed, okay? So um, here are some statistics, statistics and you know, just to say that we, this is some of the things that is really happening in our community. It said almost 1.2 million students drop out of school, high school, each year. That's equivalent to every 27 seconds. The origin of these failures that every 27 seconds a high school student Drop, decided they're going to drop out of school. And I would tell you that the origin of these failures, it started in middle school. So I know when I was coming up, I didn't go to um, uh, junior high school. We called it junior high school. Now they call it middle school. I didn't go to junior high school until seventh grade. But we have a lot of kids who uh, are, are not prepared for the social environment that they're being thrust into. Um, what I mean by that now, you know, as I mentioned, I went doing seven, in my seventh grade year to uh, junior high school, but sixth grade, our kids, our babies are graduating from or transitioning from elementary school to uh, sixth grade. Um, and we know that middle, middle school is sixth, seventh, eighth grade. So, you know, fifth grade, you would think they're still babies. And uh, my grandson, my oldest grandson, <laughs> he is going to middle school this coming, I guess, after Labor Day, um, uh, Maryland. That's when they go back to school. So it's, it's really a challenge for them, you know, just being an, educa being an educator, uh, teaching sixth grade and the transition. I think they should, you know, go back to allowing them to come you know, go, go to uh, middle school during the seventh grade. I, that's just my personal belief and experience. But it, I, uh, John Hopkins did a study, a research that says that during the sixth grade year, that's when kids decide whether they're going to graduate or whether they're going to drop out of school. Yes, I said that sixth grade is when that happened. And the reason being is because they're unable to handle the social and economic um, challenges that they face in school. I mean, just think about your own experience or some of the stories that your children come home and share with you about their experience. You know, when I was coming up, um, we didn't, it wasn't so much about bullying. I know we had to fight and everything, but you know, it has got to a point where in middle school and um, even in, um, I, it's, I, I, it's, bullying is in the workplace, bullying is everywhere. You know, it got so bad that we had to come up with a, a law. Um, it had to be um, become a law, anti-bullying law. But our kids, they deal with that every single day when they go to school. 
And um, I mean, those are some very, very disturbing uh, statistics. Here's another one for you. It said, <coughs> excuse me, 160,000 kids stay home from school every single day to avoid bullying. And a lot of kids, a lot of times, we have children who actually suffer in silence because they're afraid. Parents, I ask you to really, really pay attention to what's going on in your child's life. A lot of times, I, knew, I know that um, we have a situation where it used to be, I know when I was growing up, uh, I come home from school, my mom was there. You know, and she was there to make sure we did our homework and we, she was there to give us a snack or whatever it is. Um, you know, most of the time she was there. But uh, unfortunately, you know, we have those latchkey kids. We have kids who go on in homes and they're getting younger and younger uh, by themselves. And, you know, by the time mom get home from work or dad get home from work, is it's homework time, it's time to go to bed. And, I mean, it's the routine. I mean, it's just... Uh, um, more and more, I see more parents out of the home and unable to, uh, be, because of cir circumstances, to help their kids with homework or, you know, just uh, make that family time. A lot of kids don't have an opportunity to sit home and, and, I mean, sit at the dinner table with their family so families could have those conversations. That used to happen in our families where we sit down. I know with my kids, I would make a point, you know, to as much as possible to sit down and have dinner with them so I could kind of find out what's going on in, in their lives. You know, and I believe, I, I personally believe that you should have a friendship with your child. You should create an environment where your child can come home and will not be afraid to tell you whatever it is that they're going through, whatever experience that they, are, they may have, you know, because guess what? Somebody else is talking to your child. And Garner, he talks about the five hierarchy of needs that we have. And if our needs are not being met, there's a conflict. And one of the needs that we have is a, that we need love and we need a, a sense of belonging. So if you're not embracing that, that doubt, though, though your, your child's need, guess what? Somebody else is ready to do it. They're ready to be there, and that's why a lot of our kids get involved with gangs and, and activities and, you know, things like that. So parents, become more actively involved in your child's life. <laughs> it's, it's imperative that you do, because a lot of them, they go to school every single day, and they have to face bullies. And in fact, the, the, the reason why that the, um, the law came into existence because so, uh, it was a child who was being bullied and then next thing you know, he decided to hang himself. So you don't want that to be your kid. Okay, so that's, you know, that's a, from an educator and that's from a mom because a lot of times, you know, with race, relationship is everything. So as an educator, I always try to build a relationship with my children who come into my classroom every day and let them know, listen, you know, I'm here for you. I'm your coach. I'm your, you know, everything that you need me to be so you can be successful in life, you know. And that's, what, that's the mission of the Not My Kids Foundation, to make a positive life change impact in the lives of young people through mentorship and advocacy uh, um, services. Excuse me. And um, so, you know, it's, it's just so important that we, we, we get engaged. And parents, please go to the parent-teachers meeting. Please see about your kids. Don't wait until they're failing and then decide to go and, and, and you know, have, and, and let it be about the teachers, what the teachers didn't do, and, you know, all those things. Let it be about us. Let's, let's be that village. You know, if the kid need homework, if they're doing, dealing with some issues at home, it's good information for uh, a teacher to know. Okay, and it says every year a shocking 3.3 million kids, a million child abuse reports are made in the United States. Let me read that again. Every year a shocking 3.5 3.3 million child abuse cases are reported. I mean, just recently in the news, um, this young man, he decided, I'm not sure if it was his cousin or his, he was a brother, 
But he killed these kids. It was two kids, I believe it was two, maybe three kids. Um, but there, there clearly, they had to been some red flags. What a young man. He maybe mental health illness. I don't know what were the triggers, but if we are really, really concerned about our kids, surely there was a red flag, some kind of indication, maybe from the kids. I mean, you know, so what I'm saying is we need to be more involved, be more aware, be more conscious of those sort of things, that what's going on in our houses, what's going on with our children. I mean, it's just so, so vitally important that we do. I mean, it's a matter of life and death. That's how we have to approach it. And then we say, not my kids. Why, why not my kids? Because every kid that come become a part of the Not My Kids Foundation, we're going to stand up for them. We're going to fight for them. And we're going to declare the next generation of lawyers, doctors, uh, ministers, you know, because, you know, like I said, we give our kids a hard time. And the thing I say is our kids, you know, there's a saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So when you begin to criticize and, you know, do all those sorts of things, um, talk about the kids, guess what? They are a replica of you. <laughs> you got to take some onus of that. You know, how much time you spending with your child. You know, as I said, if you don't spend time with them, somebody else will. It said more than one in five children under the age of 18 living in po poverty in America. So that's equivalent to, that is 16.1 million children go to bed hungry, living in deplorable situations. And we say, God bless America. But we are Americans, and we need to stand up for our children. And parents, please, 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 stop, stop calling your children all kind of names out of their names, <laughs> telling them they're going to be like their no good daddy. Your mother was a whore, and your father, he was on drugs, he an alcoholic, you're going to be all up. Stop that. You know, the word of God is so powerful that uh, it talks about Abraham. Abraham, before his, uh, his name was changed from Abra to Abraham. So we know that he is the father of many nations. So when people called him, when God just changed his name from Abra to Abraham, people, every time they called his name, they said, hey, Abraham. And what they were saying, they were saying, hey, father of many nations. And I remember, <laughs> I, I'm sure Kelly don't mind me saying this. So anyway, Kelly would come home from school or come home or whatever, and I, and I would see her in her rebellious state and her little sassiness. You know, when we get a certain age as young ladies, that's when we get real sassy. And, and 18, oh my God, we, we real grown then. But, <laughs> but anyway, I would see Kelly, she'd come home and, her sassiness, and I know she, you know, maybe she was high off of some weed or whatever, um, but instead of me calling her what the words that would come to my mind, I would say, hey, one mighty woman of God. So I, instead of calling her out of her name, in fact, I never cursed at e either of my children. Kelly is not my only child. I have two other sons, and um, I, I'm a grandmama. That's really exciting. I know I don't look like a grandmama, but I am. We had three, um, well, two uh, grandsons, and then I have a granddaughter, just had a birthday, and then I have one in the, in the bacon, in, in the pot, in the, in the stove, will be born in October. So, um, but I will call her as I saw her a mighty woman of God. And you know what Kelly is that today is because I decided to allow her to be what she wanted to be. You know, we always tell our kids, you can be anything you want to be. <laughs> but you know what? It also says that our children are like arrows in our hands. And as, as parents, it's our job, it's our duty and our responsibility to point them in the right direction that they're supposed to go into. It's not the uh, it's not the schools, you know. Um, I, 
parents, I, I could not wait to teach my kids their, their ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, you know, and can one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my goodness, I could not, I could not wait to do that. You know, and because uh, I broke the cycle and my family and, and decided, you know what, I don't want to depend on welfare. I don't, I'm not going to live in pow, uh, uh, public housing. I'm creating a, 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 a um, I'm declaring my next generation. The things that I, I dealt with that growing up, my kids not going to be dealing with that. So that's where not my kids come from. You know, and Kelly today, you know, she's very successful. She decided she wanted to be an entrepreneur because her mama, she saw that model in her family. My dad was an entrepreneur. You know, when I, um, I told you I went to Corp America after graduating from high school, and so I went to a staffing company and, you know, the, you know, the, the, the whole, um, how that structure of a staffing company, you know, the, you have um, the client who needs the services and then you have um, a, where they actually contact, a, you know, the client who needs the services contact a staffing agency and then the agency will contact, you know, their, their um, workers, their employees. So that was my situation. I went to, on several jobs as a, uh, as a temp. And you know what I said? You know what? I can do better than this right here because it seemed like when you don't have a college degree, people have a tendency to try to think you, to make you think that you're less than them. But you know what? You got to know who you are. <laughs> you got to know that you have, you know, everything that you need. God said he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, everything that we need is already in the earth. All we have to do is activate it. You know, a lot of times we need to change what we say because we have power and life and death is in our tongue. So by the words of our mouth, we create our own world. We, when, by the words of our mouth, we create our ch own children's lives. You know, calling them out of their name, calling them, beating them down with, you know, self-esteem, tearing down their self-esteem, tearing down their confidence. But when I decided, I said, you know what, I am going to start my own business. So in 1996, I started a BOH Systems, and I, that was a home-based business from 1996 to 2007. And so my, while I was, um, you know, working um, uh, at full time with my business, I also decided to get my uh, master's program. So my kids had an opportunity to see me, you know, starting this this home-based business, profitable home-based business from 1996 to 2007, and also see me graduate in 2003 with a master's degree in education. So it's not where you start from. It's how you, you know, you, you're, you have to see your end in mind. You got to begin with the end in mind. Where are you going? What's your destiny? You know, what, what, what type of uh, uh, legacy you want to leave for your children? Certainly, it's my desire to leave generational wealth to the next generation, to the next generation. So when the time my grandkids um, go on to, uh, you know, college or become entrepreneurs like my daughter Kelly, where she never worked for anybody, not one day in her life, because I believed in her dream. I believed in the principles that I, that I installed in all three of my children. You can be whatever you want to be, and guess what? I'm going to support that. Because Kelly, she received a um, partial scholarship to Edward Waters uh, College in Jacksonville, Florida. But, you know, I, I said, Kelly... What is it that you want to do? She said, Mommy, I want to do hair. I said, okay, we're going to find the best hair school, that you know, lo a local hair school, and it was Dudley Beauty College. And Dudley prepared Kelly um, to be one of the best uh, hairstylists in the D.C. metropolitan area. I can say in the world, I can brag on my daughter because I call her my superstar. And she is a superstar because that's what I called her. So you see, as we uh, begin to speak the words and say, hey, superstar, I see her come home from school. I'll say, hey, superstar, and Kelly is a superstar. In fact, she is a rock star. <laughs> Kelly never worked for anybody in her life. 
So I told her, I said, let me tell you, while you're still at home, you're going to stack up your money. And when you leave my house, leave our house, you're going to buy your own house. You're going to become a homeowner. When I left my parents' house, I moved from a project to another project. Okay, in fact, we lived across the street from each other. So I am so, you know, godly proud of her, you know, being able to not make excuses, but be able to change my life, change my family situation. You know, because I was after change, so I became the change that I sought for and put myself in, in, in a better situation. And you know, a lot of times people have a tendency to blame their condition, their circumstances on somebody else. <laughs> You don't have a right to do that. You need to create your own situation. And as I said, the Not My Kids Foundation, we are a 5013C nonprofit organization. And, um, you know, I'm working full time. I'm back in the classroom working full time, you know, with a mentoring program. Um, it's called PK Girls. It stands for Petrina and Kelly Mentoring Program. Um, 2017 was a very challenging year in my life. So I sold my house and moved to South Florida, Miami, Florida. Lived there for 10 years <laughs> and worked, uh, um, continued with the foundation, uh, PK Girls Mentoring Program. Um, some of the young uh, ladies that, was, that are uh, in the mentoring program were some of the students that I actually taught. Um, this past uh, June, our first group of mentoring girls in the mentoring program graduated um, and going on to college. So our kids, they really need us to be mentors. They need us to be their advocates. They need us. Stop talking down on our children. And I talked about Kelly, you know, my, my, my other two, two children are following their dreams as well. One is a, an expiring um, music producer. The other one is in Hollywood, California. He's an actor. Um, so shout out to you my other kids, just in case they see me on here talking about Kelly. Well, I can talk about Kelly technically because this is her show. <laughs> but I want to talk about um, switch the gears. We're going to take a quick break right now, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to talk about the finding moments. Thank you. Be right back. Hello, everyone. It's your girl, Coach Kelly, from the Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. I'm here to talk about my brand new book, The 30 Day, 30 Minute Visionary Journal, Awakening the Finisher Within. I wrote this book because I wanted to inspire other people to be finishers in their own personal journey of business and everyday life. So writing this book has really helped me to organize my thoughts a lot better. And it has also just made me look at things different and not put so much pressure on myself because before I would try to compile so much information in at one time but now it has slowed my pace down a lot and I'm able to really plan things out in a 30 day in a 30 minute manner and so I think that now you know with different projects that I'm working on I feel that I'm a little more confident in what it is that I'm doing because I've actually planned it out better. So I hope that people who get this book will have a deeper appreciation for number one, who they are, what they've been called to, and the people group that they've been called to as well. Um, I also want people to have a clear and step-by-step -step guide to how to fight against fear and procrastination. I hope that this book will help you to win in each and every level of your life, each and every area of your life. I want this book to change the way you see yourself. When you look yourself in a mirror, that you won't see yourself through the eyes of fear, but that you'll see yourself through the eyes of faith, knowing that you are a finisher and that you will finish each and every project that you put your hands on. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you, gracias. <laughs> Because without you, I would not be able to do what I do, what I love every day, from styling my clients to the boutique, and now my new show, The Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. This has been an exciting journey for me. I'm inspired by each and every last one of your comments, how you share my posts, 
you know, going on the YouTube, leaving comments, just all of that just warms my heart every time I read it. And so I wanted to just let you know that you can buy my book on my website at www.coachkellyseeks.net. Thank you again for tuning in. And I love you guys so much. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. I'm your host today, uh, a.k.a. Well, Patrina Makins, the founder of the Not My Kids Foundation, PK Girls Mentoring Program, where Kelly serve as the vice president. With PK Girls, as I had mentioned earlier, it stands for Patrina and Kelly. Um, and I would tell you that that story came um Again, you know, I, I believe in purpose, being a purpose-driven person. And uh, PK Girls um, is about me and Kelly's life, okay? <laughs> um, I told you how I called her my superstar and, you know, how much I love her, how I'm so godly proud of all of her achievement, all of her accomplishment, you know, um, because I decided to let her uh, um let her decide to do what she desired to do. We recognize the gifts and the talent that she had on the inside of her. So that was definitely a defining moment for both of us because, you know, uh, she, truly she is a rock star. Uh, you just uh, saw her promo, promo about the, her book, 30-Day um, Visionary Book, and she also has two other books um, about a business book. In her first book, Yes, You Are Champion, champion Turning Everyday Challenges into Victory. And that's how I taught my children to live their lives. That's what I told them, that they are champions, that they can be anything that they desire to be. So parents, you know what? This, this join, It's a movement. Join a movement. Start a movement for your children. That's what I did. I, I said, not my kids. <laughs> And um, so I'm so excited about that. And uh, with PK Girls, I would tell you that Kelly and our relationship has not always been so sweet in the flowers and roses. Oh, my God. I remember there was a time I could not stand her. So, um, you know, we still have our moments. And, but, we, you know, she's all grown up now. So we, and I'm, I'm grown up as well. I'm mature and everything. Um, but uh, I just want to say that, you know, our relationship, um, because we practice to make it healthy and, you know, stay on point, that we were able to start a foundation uh, and uh, also the girl PK Girls Mentoring Program because we know how challenging it is for uh, young ladies tra transitioning from, uh, middle, from elementary school to middle school and high school. So that's how the PK Girls Mentoring Program started. Um, truly was a defining moment. Uh, you know, whereas when I was in Miami, I had young ladies that would come by my classroom, and, and one in particular, her, she came and she said, um, could you please help me start my business? And I was like, mm, that's interesting. Why did you come out, all these teachers in this building, why did you come to me and ask me to help you start your business? She said, I knew you would help me. And at that moment, I felt the connection and I felt compelled uh, to have a conversation with Kelly so we can start the PK Girls Mentoring Program, which actually started in uh, South Florida. And our mission is help other mothers and young ladies trans. We know realizing the, how uh, challenging it is for them to transition from middle school to high school and college be beyond. So we want to use our story to say that, hey, mom, you know what? You can survive. If Kelly and I survive, you can survive as well. And I, I just want to also talk about another defining moment that I had that actually really led up to the Not My Kids Foundation. Um, and it was in 1992. Um, was definitely a, a defining moment for me. You know, um, that was during some really challenging time in our lives as a family. Um, I had my oldest son had an opportunity. Oh man, he's really so competitive. <laughs> 
So he um, back back in the back in the, the during this time he would um, come home from school and tell me about, hey mom, I I, I uh, just won a um, a Nintendo game. And I would cheer him on, yay, yay, go to the next round. And, you know, he ended up winning the championship. Yay, go, William. <laughs> and then um, so he had an opportunity to do a science project, and then he won a scholarship to a very pre prestigious uh, school in uh, Queen Anne's uh, School, in, in, um, I believe it's in Bowie, Maryland. So back at that time, I was driving a 19, I believe it was a 1964 old Malibu green station wagon. And so I would see these other families come and they bring their kids. And certainly I was able to see a lifestyle that I wanted for me and my children. And, um, and I remember there was a tear that ran down the side of my right cheek. And I could hear a voice on the inside of me that say, not my kids not my kids. And from that moment, I purpose in my heart to create a better situation. So this was back during the time where I was a stay-at-home mom for a while, you know, trying to figure out how I was going to break through this generational cycle of curse that I believe that, that I would call it. Um, and and, and that's, that was a defining moment for me. And then years later, I decided, you know, to go back to school to create a, uh, create a better situation for my children as well. So that's how the Not My Kids Foundation actually started. Um, just that, that, that commitment, just that tear running down my eyes and want to make a, a better situation for my children. You know, my heart is still, compassion, I still have passion, compassion for children who are not receiving that same love and that same support from their families, and that's how we started a PK Girls Mentoring Program. So if you're interested in finding more about the Not My Kids Foundation, uh, learn more about my story, uh, my default finding moments, Kelly's story, um, visit our website, the Not My Kids Foundation.org. Uh, again, we are a, not, a 5013C nonprofit tax exempt um, organization. Um, the re how you can get involved, you can become a mentor, go on our mentor page, uh, and you go to our Get, in get Involved link, click on uh, Not My Kids Foundation, um, excuse me, go on our link, and click on Get Involved, and it will tell you how you can actually get involved. So there's a few ways that you can get involved. The first way is become a mentor. We're also uh, registered with the National Mentoring Program which is a, 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 a um, global uh, mentoring organization. So you can locate us there as well as part of uh, the mentoring program. So fill out our, um, our form. And then also, again, our program is going to start up again at Blue High School. So if you're interested to become a mentor, uh, we, will provide, we, will, we will provide free training for you, um, also your background check and everything that you need to do in order to um, go into Blue High School to become a mentor uh, for the year to, uh, school year 2017-2018 uh, school year. So I'm, I'm just really, really um, excited about, you know, our accomplishments. Um, that my, my children are experiencing. So it's, it's definitely our desire to help replicate that same uh, process in other children's lives. Um, we're in the need of tutors. Uh, if you're interested in tutoring, also go on our website and sign up to be a tutor. And then we also have uh, where you can also get involved as a, um, to donate. The Not My Kids Foundation is a membership-driven organization. So there's various levels of membership. Uh, we have it starting from the platinum membership. We have a gold membership. Uh, we have a corporate membership. And also, uh, we have a sponsor membership. So you can go to the Not My Kids Foundation org and find out how you can get involved. Because guess what? Our children really need us. You know, um, our... our um, Juvenile justice system is, is flooded with children. If they had mentors and advice, you know, if they're not the love and, and things that they're not receiving at home, 
certainly, you know, we need to open up our hearts and allow those kids to, to feel love. Um, I, I remember a couple, well, 1996, uh, Kelly and I, we had a mother and daughter retreat, and that was um, with PK Girls Mentoring Program, uh, very successful. So we had this circle, and, and, and we were telling our moms to look at your face, your daughter, hug your daughter, and tell your daughter how much you love her. And I would tell you, women and, um, and their daughters, where moms and their daughters were bawling. I mean, they were just crying. And then one young lady, she was saying, Mom, you never told me that you love me. You never hugged me like this since I was a little girl. And this young lady was in the seventh grade. Just think about that for one moment. In her head, you know, she um, probably felt her mother did not love her. She didn't care about her. You know, her mother was always working. She had to work. There was no father in the home. So you never know what someone else is going through. So guess what? You could have been that person who gave her a hug and let her know, hey, we, your, your mom loved you. She working. I mean, just kind of get to know her, which I really did. And I knew some of the challenges the young lady, you know, facing everything. But it's nothing like your family telling you I love you. Fathers, tell your daughters you, that you love them. Don't let no other man tell your daughter that you, they love her and, you know, you not in that person and her life and then somebody else come along and tell her that you love, that, that they love her. No, that's not agape love. That's, full, full, uh, that's lust. I mean, they'll tell them that it's not I, I lust you. They No, I, <laughs> no. and your daughter, she believed that and, 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 and end up getting messed all up in the hand of somebody who lied to her. You know, so you you be that. Be that be the, be those those people that your your children need. Be those mentors that our kids need. You know, big brothers, big sisters, they, those um, uh, mentoring programs are out there, but PK girls surely surely can, you know, need your help. Um, all of our volunteers must uh, you know, go through stringent uh, background checks. And we, we you know, it's, you don't have to pay for that. You know, we make sure that you have all of those resources and everything you need to be able to become a mentor um, for, you know, our young men and our young daughters. We really, really, you know, appreciate you doing that. And all your gifts are tax deductible. Um, so it's been really, really exciting. Um, to be on this side <laughs> of the production. I'm usually on the other side and, you know, um, uh, counting down and, you know, with Kelly and, you know, making sure she have everything that she need and everything. And, and like I said, we had another guest who was supposed to be here and for whatever reason, because of conflict in their schedule, wasn't able to be on the show. So she was like, oh, mom, go ahead and do it. I was like, you know what? I really, really don't want to do it. but. If you insist, I'll go ahead and do it. So I just pray that something that was said on the show would be a blessing to you and your family, uh, that you would become more cognizant of, you know, the things that you're doing at home and make an extra effort to be really engaged in your children. Because I know that, you know, as I mentioned, Matt, when, when the five basic need of a child is not met, they go into a conflict. And there's two types of conflict. There's an internal conflict and there's an external conflict. <laughs> and guess what? The internal conflict a lot of times spills out and you see the external conflict. But a lot of our children, they are depressed. You know, they're suffering in silence. So parents, please be an active participant in your child's future, your child's education. Get actively involved. Not sure how much time I have left. I have five. <laughs> I have five minutes left. So um, again, because if you don't, somebody else will. That's why a lot of our young men get involved in drug activity, and then we have this human trafficking that's going on. Because some man he come around and tell your daughter or your niece that she can be, a, or your granddaughter, that she can be a superstar, supermodel, 
And then these guys, they take them into studios and do a photo shoot on them. And next thing you know, they're missing. Too many of our children are going missing. Nobody know where they are. Get a system in your house. Talk to your children about these things. We used to always talk to our babies about don't talk to strangers. <laughs> but you know what? It, it stays such an easy target. Our children become easy targets when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as a parent. And they go missing. And nobody, they, some kids never, never uh, return. I remember the story about these three young ladies uh, who was missing over 10 years. And one, this guy, he decided to, um, one of the girls, I believe she kind of broke loose and, and um, was able to yell out, help, help, help. So this guy, he uh, was able to, he, he was actually, he was walking by. And then he um, heard her calling for help. He called the police. So you're talking about being ca in captivity in a community for 10 years and being treated as a, a sex slave. And then someone so happened for this particular day walking by her, her cry. Our children are crying. We need to listen to their cries. There's red flags. Help me, help me, I need help. No, stop telling your kid be quiet, be seen, and not heard. Listen to what your children have to say. And as a result, these young ladies, not saying that's the situation, their case, but there was a case. They had some way that they were in, somebody ignored them. Somebody didn't know where they were. Make sure you know where your children are. I remember there was an announcement, a public announcement at 10 o'clock every night. It would say, parents, do you know where your children are? <laughs> but today, you're not going to hear that announcement. You know, and some parents are like, I don't even care where they are, as long as they ain't messing with me, as long as they're not bothering me. You know, but you, 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 you know what? We got, we got to take on this as parents. You need to make sure you know where your children are because our babies are, you know, being abducted. And sometimes it's a situation where you do have parents who are actually involved in their children's life and, you know, unfortunate situations are happening. So I'm not going to say that, you know, uh, be arrogant arrogant and say you're not doing what you're supposed to do but a lot of parents are doing what they're supposed to do and um, doing the best that they can because as, as I had mentioned before there's a perpetual generation cycles of poverty illiteracy you know and things like that and so what that's what the foundation our foundation is is about helping giving those parents the support that they need to be a safe haven you know, for those parents and, and, and young men and young women as they transition into life. The Not My Kids Foundation is a movement. Join the movement, get involved. The Not My Kids Foundation.org. You can also find us on Facebook, the Not My Kids Foundation. Uh, Patrina Makins, uh, Coach Kelly Speak, you need successful look, inbox her, inbox me. And let me know how you want to get involved. So we can say no to general, not my kids, to generational cycles of poverty, drug addiction, alcoholism, mental illness. Um, as you can see, Kelly uh, had several um, mental health professionals on the show. So if you see some signs, maybe you're not able to uh, help your child with those particular things. So, you know, we have resources. We have an awesome, awesome uh, network base where you can actually, you know, call us and we'll get you connected to um, people who uh, can help. Um, I have a girlfriend uh, who uh, know about domestic violence. In, fa in fact, she created uh, the domestic violence program in, in Metropolitan uh, Boys and Girl Club. Another, I have another girlfriend. She is the uh, founder of Sister to Sister uh, program in Prince George's, Maryland. Her name is Carolyn Washington. So, you know, she can help women who are in, divest in uh, domestic uh, violence situation uh, find a shelter for you all. 
So don't suffer in silence. You know, we got to we got to be the change. We got to uh, be there to be, have uh, develop support system. PK Girls uh, Mentoring Program also have a Push into Purpose Empowerment events. So that's another one of our websites. So it's been my absolute pleasure to be the host of the Coach Kelly Speak Talk Show. I'm not live on Facebook, but we are live vision listenvisionlive.com. So if you miss Coach Kelly Speak Show, I decided I'm not going to do Facebook Live because I never did a Facebook Live. But I think Kelly may going to, uh, when she get back, she's going to share this on her page. So until then, until next week, um, be blessed and have a wonderful day. And tell your children you love them. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.